Hey guys, welcome to TBM Forge. Today we are going to be working on this blade. We're going to make it, uh, we're going to sharpen it, we're going to fix it because I've done some no-nos and some unexpected things happened to it. But if you don't know, this is the blade I was working on and in the first video when we were explaining about how to make your own forage. <coughs> so with that being said, I'm going to tell y'all just a little briefing on what happened with the blade and also explain to y'all the process if you didn't know to my best of ability because I'm still learning but I've done some studying as well but um, I can still use some few tips I just got the basis of what it is so if anything we're learning together before we get on to more expensive steels right now we're just working on rebar so with that being said we're gonna get right into it uh, today you can see the blade is warped and then what warp means is basically it's, it bends during the quench or during any process but I normalize the steel. If you don't know what normalization is, it's when you um, when you begin to blacksmith and you begin to mold the blade, you can cause stress in the steel, and that can make it structurally unsound. So let's say you just do that and you go for the quench, it can cause cracks, or even after that, you can shatter the blade easy because there's a lot of pent up stress that you didn't release. So I did the normalization. That was the easy part. Then I had to heat it up once again. I think I left it up, up a little bit higher this time. That way I could get to that non-magnetic point. But I guess I left it in a little bit too long. So the actual tip melted. So it looked really ugly. It was shallow right here and melted. And so I basically had to grind it off with the grinder. And now we have this little blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it back to place obviously and then I want to curve it to make it like a curved little claw shaped thing and also this is what I was able to do successfully which is make the tang it's not gonna be this fat don't worry I just want to have extra material I can work with and I can sand down to so with that being said um, when I went for the quench I didn't have anything to hold it down and then it was pretty hot obviously it was melting and I put it into water which is a no-no um, you can put it into water, but um, it's more harsher than if you were to put it into oil. So I put it into water at a desperation uh, without uh, just trying to let it cool down a little bit. Just a little bit, that way I can go for a safer quench. And so it warped. That So that's what we're going to have to work on today, is bending it back. And also we're going to be talking about why you should always make sure your sword of the spirit is strong. That way you don't fall into temptation and that way you can basically fight the enemy because um, we don't fight in the physical we fight in the spiritual um, I have a whole Q&A series if you want to look more into that and grow your faith and I also answer other questions that many people have about faith or many misconceptions many uh, contradictions that you may think there are in the Bible but in reality they're misinterpretations so with that being said I'm just gonna go right into the little preaching right quick you can there's a timestamp that I'm gonna put in the description because I'm still trying to see how to balance these things out and uh, that way if you just want to go into the foraging if you're just here for the foraging but even though I would highly recommend you to look at this if you want to grow your faith or if you're interested uh, if you have the time it's going to be there so if you want to go to the timestamp it's going to be down in the description on me actually working on the blade but for right now we're going to talk about uh, why is it going to sorry I'm a little bit sick so right now I'm going to be talking about why is it so important to keep the sword of the spirit sharp when you're going into the battle with the enemy um, with that being said the main reason is because the devil is always going to be attacking the devil is always ruthless always looking for an opening always looking for the open door um, if you give him an inch he takes a mile I don't know if you heard that before but it's true and that's why it's so important to keep your sword sharp how do you keep your sword sharp by reading the word by praying by being in constant communion with God because that's what his relationship with him allows us to do through the sacrifice of Jesus and also fasting it's also a good way to sharpen your blade that way your flesh doesn't dull your blade as well while you're fighting with the enemy the spirit resembles a sword because it's the Holy Spirit it is the, literally the Word of God that is like a double-edged sword to the enemy what did Jesus use in the desert against the devil when he used distorted we could say warped <laughs> a bad blade against God um, well yeah against Jesus he's literally the living God um, he used the word he used the word of God he used the word at the end of the book of Revelations you see 
that's the way he destroys the Antichrist is just by a single breath and it says it's gonna be like a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth it's talking about the Word of God and so what do you use let's say you're getting tempted into lust you look up Bible verses on uh, against lust Bible verses against perversion Bible verses against uh, anger Bible verses against uh, frustration anxiety there's many of them you can go to bible.com or biblegateway.com and I believe or you could just search up Bible verses against this Bible verses against anxiety that talk about it and it gives you like a hundred verses to use or a hundred verses to read to help you which is a really good tool as in back in the day you actually had to dig through the Bible which I would highly recommend to dig through the Bible but it makes it easier for those dire times so with that being said um, it's easy to use it's, it's the Word of God, it's your faith on the Word of God that really sharpens your blade. That way when the enemy comes and says and tries to get you to lust, you say these verses right after verse, verse after verse, and it just comes out and just cut, cut through his attack, cut through uh, his shield, and do damage. And so it would take a lot more time for him to come back at you or to even think about coming back at you. So with that being said, that's just a short little lesson on why you should keep your sword of the spirit sharp that way when you go and fight against the enemy you can puncture you can pierce and you can really do some serious damage no that's a lot of damage so with that being said we're going to get right into the foraging hope you like the little lesson and so i know it doesn't look that hot on camera but that's because it's the middle of the daylight but as you can see, it's easily bending. Uh, I'm doing these light taps at the moment. In the next segments, so you're gonna see try to me try to put that curve in there, but it doesn't really curve. It just twists the blade. So it's a point learned, and I'm gonna discuss that in the next segment that's coming. But right now, you can see me failing and uh, me getting just a little bit frustrated. But in the next segments, we're gonna see catastrophic, yeah, catastrophic failure. And that's going to be a point which is really going to change this whole direction of this video. So I know if y'all heard me earlier, I said we're going to be sharpening the blade, but that's going to take uh, another couple weeks, sadly. All right, guys. So listen, learn. If you want to make a curve in a blade, always do that before you begin to flatten the rebar. If not, it's going to be really, really hard. I'm learning that the tough way. I feel like a little dummy, but it's all right. This is why we're here to learn. Uh, so right now I'm just gonna straighten out the blade, flatten it out again, cause I lost some width trying to do what I was gonna do. And yeah, so yeah, I'll show you the finished product once we start sharpening it. So at the end of this clip, this is what I was talking about. Uh, I didn't get in on camera because I was gonna just record the quenching, but after this uh, next heat up, as you see, I checked and I was like, mm, this didn't heat up at all. I just go overload, I compact everything, uh, it's not shown on video, but I leave it in there for a good minute and 30 minutes, I mean 30 seconds, and it melts off, sadly. Very big bummer, but we're learning, like I said. Well, this is how our first blade came out. Voila! <laughs> so, it ended up melting again. I still am trying to work things out with how I want to set the coals for the forage. And also how long I'm letting it out. Uh, in this instance, I put a lot of more coals in a more compact area. Not thinking it was really going to do a difference. And the smallest things matter. <laughs> but it was more compact coal, so the blade melted off. Because your blade suffered catastrophic weapon failure, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. So we're going to have to start all over from scratch. Um, now I have something more cool in mind. Um, Kind of like a small little axe. I already have a piece of rebar right there, but we're going to get right to it, sadly. I'll just show you all the finished product. That way we can get to sharpening something soon. Alright guys, I know it's been a while. Um, the reason why it took so long, if you didn't notice in the first few segments, the blade or that I originally have melted off and so I got another stick of rebar and decided to make another one. Kind of glad I did because this one looks is going to come out a lot more interesting and less I can say ugly in, in a sense. And it gives me more material to work with. Uh, I just got done quenching it after being really cautious this time not to melt the blade. 
I'm about to go and start grinding it and then we can start working on the bevels and then after we get everything done and sharpened uh, we're gonna start engraving and then it would be a finished product uh, besides me uh, wrapping this up I think for my first tang I'm just gonna wrap it up uh, find a nice little fancy way to wrap it up that way it's not just pure metal that you're holding and it absorbs some of the shock when you swing it um, if you were to swing it at all but with that being said we're gonna start grinding Gotta get the safety equipment on uh, and make sure you don't get a disc flying inside your face. Uh, but with that being said, I hope you enjoy these segments. That's it for today's video. I am going to be doing engraving before I sharpen the blade. The only reason why is because I need a bandsaw. Uh, I have one currently, but it's doesn't. It's not the actual bandsaw. It's one of these cheap, uh, rigid. No, I think it's a Ryobi that is just for like sanding like wood planks and stuff. So I want to get one from uh, Harbor Freight. Just a little quick, little cheap one. That way I can sharpen the blade quickly. And you're not here watching me try to edge something which is a sanding stone which would take a little bit longer since I haven't actually sharpened a blade before and I want to learn as well but I also am very cautious about y'all's time so with that being said thank you for watching this video I know I had a little plot twist um, now I have two blades so I don't think I showed y'all but in the next engraving video I'll show you the old blade that I had that melted off I actually turned that into like a little mini throwing knife and I'm gonna sell that in a set with the little sickle that, that that's the most closely related blade that I can say I can call my blade closely related to, if you know what I'm saying. Because it looks like a sickle with a makeshift crowbar at the end. I know y'all saw me do a little demonstration. But that's everything for today. Thank you for watching the video. I'm hoping y'all are blessed. And I'm really hoping that the word that y'all heard today really affected your lives for those of y'all who stuck around for the word. If not, I can leave another timestamp down below just in case you're interested. Um, I know it would be a blessing for your life. So with that being said, I'm just going to pray right quick. The video is going to end if you want to log off before prayer. But I'm going to pray for you, those of y'all who want a little player. I know these times are really tough nowadays. So with that being said, God, thank you for this day that you have given me, Lord. And thank you for this day that you have given all the viewers and whatever day that they're looking this on. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love, Lord. I pray that you bless them, Lord. And not only bless them, that you strengthen them, that you give them patience, Lord. And that through any trials or tribulations or through anything in their life that may seem for evil, that you show them that you're doing it for good to mold them into the person that they're going to be for the plan that you have for their life. God, please bless them wherever they go. Please protect them where they're at and be with them always as your worst states. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys. It's been an awesome video. Stay tuned for the next Forge video. That's probably going to be in two weeks depending on when I'm able to get that band saw. But for the meantime, you have to stay true. I mean, stay on my Q&A series. That's going to be posting in the meantime until I get another video for TBM Forge. So with that being said, God bless.